So welcome back everyone and welcome to the ones just signing in for the first um, nice talk in this Helmholtz Information and Data Science Career Day. Um, uh, my name is Andreas, I'm uh, moderating this conference and I'm heading the Helmholtz Information and Data Science Academy, uh, which is comprised by six very, very nice information and data science schools. And with me for the first session is Professor Xiaozhang Zhu. She is with our Munich School and is the head of the apartment, Department of Earth Observation Data Science and a principal investigator at the, Helm at the German Center for Aeronautics and Space. And we're extremely excited and grateful to have Xiaozhang with us and um, uh, to talk about her career path in data science and what brought her to the nice satellite data. Xiaozhang, great to have you. Thank you, Andreas, for the introduction. Now I will start my presentation. So, hello, everybody. Can, can you see my screen, Andreas? I can see the screen perfectly. Ah, one more thing for all the people listening. If you have some questions for Xiao Zhang after the talk, please post them in the chat and uh, we will read the most fitting ones after Xiao Zhang's introduction. Xiao Zhang. Yeah. So, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to share with you my career in Earth Observation Data Science. So, uh, since it's about career, I will first briefly about my uh, um, biography. So uh, maybe as you can see, I'm from China, uh, where I studied space engineering. And then in 2006, I came to uh, Germany, uh, participated uh, at that time, the international master study, uh, satellite application engineering. Then I continued my PhD and also habilitation, which is a kind of a qualification for professors. And basically in 2015, I became a professor at the Technical University of Munich. And in 2018, I'm heading the department Earth Observation Data Science. And uh, uh, from May uh, this year, I'm the director of the Munich AI Future Lab on Artificial Intelligence for Earth Observation. And in the meantime, I have been um, having some stay uh, in abroad, uh, in Italy, in uh, Japan, uh, in the US. So uh, to introduce a bit my profile, I'm a scientist for Earth observation and the data science. And if you check my data science related roles, uh, for example, I'm in the board of directors of the Munich Data Science Institute at the TUM. Um, I'm directing this uh, future lab. And the, in the context of Hamholtz, uh, I'm responsible for the research area, aeronautics, uh, space, and the transport in the Hamhold AI. I guess we definitely have a boost for that. And I'm also a co spokeswoman for the Munich Data Science Research School, uh, which, which has been mentioned by uh, Mr. Kosmider before. And other than that, um, ELIS is a, a European AI network. I'm fellows in two of this unit. And I'm also an AI visiting professor at the ESA. European Space Agency. So, um, as a data scientist, uh, we have the pleasure that we can travel a lot. So, basically, this you see a picture when I was in Brazil, I was holding a cocktail in my hands. That was a very extraordinary experience. And in my spare time, I like uh, ski, uh, photograph. And uh, my group uh, at the moment uh, consists of uh, interdisciplinary a team of about 50 scientists from different disciplines. Uh, one third uh, Earth observation, one third computer science, and one third from all other possible domains. So I'm an Earth observation scientist. Uh, basically, we're using satellite uh, uh, to do the measurements of the Earth's surface. And basically, because uh, while the satellite orbiting the Earth, Earth is rotating, we're able to basically get uh, global information of the Earth's surface. And uh, we are now living in a god era of Earth observation. This is not how at DR people are having a uh, lunch break, or, although the working condition at DR is pretty nice. So uh, we are in a, a golden time because we now have uh, basically open data um, uh, from uh, different uh, uh, possibilities. For example, the game changer is ESA's Companicus program, where they have the Sentinel satellite fleet, uh, basically are providing open and free 
uh, data uh, with long-term perspective. At this moment, it's already more than 30 petabytes of data that are free to everybody, and in 10 years, probably it will be more than 100 petabytes. So, of course, uh, uh, data is not uh, yet uh, uh, geo information. So, for example, uh, what do we do with this data? Uh, you know, uh, sea ice is a very important um, climate variable. So, if the sea ice melting, then the temperature in ocean will increase. It will, in turn, also influence the ocean current. But in order to get a statement, then you actually need to use satellite to monitor a certain area for decades. Finally, then you will be able to tell whether the uh, sea ice is retreating and to which extent. Um, why do we need data science in Earth observation? Simply because uh, on the one hand, we have the observation system, which is a satellite. On the other hand, we have a user who needs geo information. And it's easy to imagine what satellite measures is not directly what the user would like to have. Therefore, we have information retrieval in the middle, which is the bridge try to turn the data to the valuable geo information. This is where data science is uh, play, playing a very big role. So uh, in our domain, in order to be able to basically harvesting from this big geo data, we need different expertise, like uh, we need uh, explorative signal processing methods to improve physical model-based information retrieval. Uh, we need to work on data fusion because we have multi-sensory data available for any application. Uh, information mining is important because we need to figure out uh, basically from the big database which are the interesting data where interesting phenomena and the changes um, happens. And the machine learning and the deep learning is obviously a very a big focus in order to have more data driven kind of analytics. Last but not less, we also need to be able to master big data management and high performance computing. So, for example, for machine learning deep learning, uh, we have developed a lot of tailored um, deep new networks uh, uh, for Earth observation problems. This is what we call our deep net zoom. And uh, currently, from the method point of view, we focus on uh, re implement uh, physics, space, domain expertise, reasoning, which means not only recognition, rather try to get spatial temporal relations of different uh, semantics, uh, transferability. Uh, because uh, we need to cross different geographic regions, also cross different sensors. Uncertainty, because we want to know how reliable the results are. Explainability, we want to understand uh, why the machine learning model is given certain uh, results. Auto ML, computing in AI, but also ethics. So, uh, my wish in research is AI and data science in Earth observation in order to tackle societal grand challenges to have social impact. Uh, for example, global urbanization, climate change, and the UN's SDGs. I give two quick examples for climate research. So for you guys who are, um, basically experienced in the past years, we had very hot summers, and the urban climate is a very uh, important topic at the moment. Uh, in order to basically uh, better understand where are the possible heat islands, we need to, to do a classification of local climate zones. These are 17 classes uh, describing how compact the buildings are, how high the buildings are, and how much percentage of green. And uh, of course, in order to do a global mapping of such a thing, we need the training data. Therefore, we selected 42 cities across the globe. To the, uh, we did the manual labeling of the 17 classes in order to provide the confidence how good the annotation were. We also give a vote to each label let 10 uh, experts to give independent opinion and finally end up with the label confidence metrics. And with this data and with uh, recurrent uh, rec uh, re convolution recurrent network, then we can get uh, first the global urban local climate zones classification. And of course, the more interesting part is the reddish part where you can see urban areas and also you can use this data to identify where the heat islands uh, are. And in addition, uh, if we uh, basically do, here is just example, the level of detail of information you can get on the right is what we achieved, on the left is what was globally available uh, uh, here now. And uh, to do a simple statistical analysis, for example, this is the proportions of the first 10 man-made structures. If we compare with the population density, we can already quantify a global inequality problem. 
for example, 40% area of a compact uh, light or large low-rise accommodates uh, uh, nearly 60% of the total population, but uh, the 30% area of sparsely built, which is houses, accommodates only 10% of total population. And we are making this data open. A second quick example is to monitor global urbanization. In the era of open data, open science, if you think about building models, you probably will think about open street map. But the situation is that we uh, have estimated to be more than 3 billion buildings in the world. Only 12% of them have a building footprint in open street map. And only 3% of this 12% actually have height information, which means less than open 4%. What we do to uh, improve the situation, we are using the planet uh, data, which has 150 satellites, uh, very small ones, uh, like this one. And they are mapping the Earth's surface on a daily basis. And we have been generating uh, training data, uh, selecting from 74 cities, and the train uh, graph convolutional recurrent neural network. Then we are able to turn this kind of planet imagery to this kind of a building footprint. If you want to see a detail, this is the planet imagery. Basically, you see it's uh, uh, at the limit of the resolution we, we want to have. But with advanced uh, data science algorithms, we can get this kind of building footprint. And if we do a multitasking learning, we can also get a building instance. Here, different color stands for different buildings. And we are doing this uh, on a global scale. And we also get the 3D information with our radar satellite. With a technique we call X ray of the Earth, we get the building height. And if we combine with the building shapes, we get this uh, kind of global 3D urban models uh, with a height accuracy better than two meters. And we are basically making a first ever such a global data. And uh, if this uh, is available, then it can, on the one hand, lead to a better understanding of urbanization and boost research in this direction. On the other hand, we also offer this data to stakeholders like UN. Uh, to help them to make a better strategic decisions. Of course, uh, uh, EO data science go far beyond this. Uh, at the DRR, we're actually the biggest Earth observation center in Europe, and we are uh, working on solutions for assistant research, global trend research, meteorology, UN's SDGs, to very practical things like city planning. And this is a quick uh, um, um, introduction of what we do at the DRR. And now my answers to named questions from the organizer. Firstly, how did the Leopoldina Career Award uh, 2018 come out? So basically, this award is awarded every two years uh, since uh, 2010. And it's presented at the Leopoldina, which is the National Academy of Science in Germany, uh, any, on this annual meeting. And each year, they are uh, um, basically uh, um, award, uh, such an award to the topic focus of the annual meeting. And just to give you an impression, this is all the recipients from the last years. So you can see they are basically from all different um, research directions. Another question I was asked is, were there any important turning point in my career? Uh, the first one is definitely the Hammerholtz uh, Young Investigators Group. At Hamhoods, we have actually opportunities for people from all different levels of career, starting from a postdoc, then to uh, a junior group leader, finally also to professorships. But this one is really a very important one for career because it offers uh, um, us uh, the first time to build up an independent research group on a topic uh, we are interested in. And we can also have a good uh, connection between the Hamhoods Center and also the universities. And the second uh, turning point, I would say, is the ERC starting grant I received in 2016, because this is a super competitive uh, grant. And basically, um, it's ca ca also kind of for then uh, um, um, uh, signal of excellence, which is uh, widely acknowledged in Europe. And this helps uh, in many cases uh, to get a, a professorship at some universities. OK. So uh, this is, brings me to the end of my introduction. I want to introduce two uh, job opportunities. Uh, firstly, from this year in Munich, we are starting the uh, one of the three German International Future Labs for Artificial Intelligence. Our one is on AI for EO. We focus on reasoning, uncertainty, and ethics. 
and the lab will bring 13 guest professors from everywhere you see the connection map to Munich to work on these topics. What is important today is that we also offer 70 beyond the fellowship uh, scholarships. Basically, um, depending, we, we select people at the uh, doctoral, postdoctoral level, and the criteria are solely the uh, excellence of the proposal and the excellence of the person. And once you select it, you will get a, a funded uh, three to six months stay in our lab. So if you're interested here, you can get more detail. And also, we are actually starting another initiative in order to make Munich a gravity center of AI for EO, including um, Hemholtz AI, uh, Mart's uh, Munich Data Science Institute at the TUM, the lab I introduced, and also uh, ELIS uh, Munich unit, which was announced last week. And then another opportunity, um, I'm uh, in the Munich Data Science uh, uh, Research School. Um, and basically, we will open um, the third core um, starting from October the 1st of this year. And uh, basically, if you get the opportunity there, you will be able to work closely with one, uh, let's say, computer science uh, scientist, another domain ex expert from biomedicine, plasma physics, earth observation, or robotics. And you will basically have this kind of joint supervision to basically use data science to make difference in important uh, application areas of uh, Hammerhoods. Um, since I heard from uh, Mr. Cosmida, I should also say a few words about DR. So at the DR, we have um, more than 8,000 employees. I would say this is the uh, biggest uh, center for uh, aerospace um, in Europe. And uh, except Earth observation, which belongs to space, they are also focused on aviation, energy, traffic, security, and the digitalization. You're welcome to visit the booth of the DR. Thank you. Truly amazing. Thank you so much, Zhang. If this was an auditorium, we would have some standing ovations now. Thank you so much for introducing us, uh, introducing us to our, your exciting career. We have a lot of questions in the chat, Victoria. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for the interesting questions. And we will start with the first one from Daniel, who is asking, Shodang, uh, besides local climb zones, where do you think are possible machine learning applications in urban climate and urban adaptation to climate change? An example for urban planning. Ah, okay. So, I mean, um, I did not have time to show it today. So basically, uh, at the Earth Observation Center, we are using machine learning, deep learning, for example, to detect, uh, uh, track um, cars, vehicles. Uh, we are also doing semantic segmentations of uh, urban areas. And we are uh, also uh, basically try to uh, use uh, um, global satellite data and machine learning to monitor global uh, change processes. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, that you can do in order to uh, deliver, uh, let's say, uh, non-existing so far um, geo-information for different tasks. Mm -hmm. And if you use, for example, reasoning, what I was mentioning, this means not only recognize the stuff, can it's how you can somehow uh, get knowledge out of the data, then you can also contribute to understand the processes. I hope this answers your question. Thank you very much. And uh, could you close your presentation? Then um, our visitors can see you in the full screen. Thank you very much. Great. Um, then we have another question. Um, this one is from Sasha coming. And he's asking, hey, thanks a lot for doing this. In your opinion, what are currently the most important challenges to tackle with and within data science? Do you need a bachelor or master's in math to be a good data scientist or machine learning engineer? Well, so I mean, um, we are now focusing at, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, to tackle real world problem because uh, we believe uh, uh, it's, uh, our value is not uh, only playing with toy data sets, uh, rather to have social impact. And at the moment, uh, we are, for, for example, uh, look at, uh, um, let's say, grand challenges that are related to the sustainability, uh, like uh, climate uh, change, like the UN's uh, Sustainable Development Goals, 
and also we are starting uh, working on energy and also uh, ecosystem. So these are the uh, areas where Earth observation data and the machine learning can uh, contribute. And uh, we, of course, lead uh, actually helping hands uh, with talent uh, at all levels. So basically, um, uh, I mean, as I showed actually already in my presentation, uh, my team is a very interdisciplinary team, not only computer scientists, but also uh, people with the physics background because we are using satellite to do measurements. Therefore, it's important to understand the physics process and the math because uh, many information retrieval process we need modeling. And here, mathematic uh, skills is of course uh, super important. And if it comes down to downstream kind of uh, science big questions, then we also collaborate with people who are from ecology, from economy, and also for other possible domains. And uh, of course, we take uh, bachelor math students as well. Thank you very much. Very interesting. We have another question coming from um, Ilya. Um, and Ilya is asking, thanks for the nice talk. When do you hire data scientists? Do you search for the candidates with particular background? Um, if you hire a new data scientist, to your team, what would be the ideal profile? I think it's a really interesting question. <laughs> and looking yeah. forward to your answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, we are constantly looking for uh, uh, young talents. And um, uh, for us, actually, uh, the outermost criteria is the uh, um, if the um, students are, are talented. So we do not care too much uh, about um, uh, the particular, uh, let's say, very specific uh, training background. Instead, we broadly taken talents that are from um, computer science, uh, from math, uh, from, um, let's say, remote sensing, uh, and also uh, electric engineering when it comes to radar. And uh, in the end, uh, it's important that the candidate is excellent and is motivated. And if it's uh, depending on the level, so if it's a PhD student, usually we have uh, already uh, projects uh, there. If it's a postdoc, then it's rather more flexible way. We would rather want to hear what the candidate actually want to do, and we see whether this would fit to our general, let's say, vision of research. And this is usually how we is, uh, um, basically uh, select people. I hope uh, this uh, gives you a um, general uh, idea uh, but of course if you are interested in details you are always welcome to contact me so much um we have another question and um this is from edgar who is ask, asking about the access to the data you were showing us <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's very simple um basically um, most of the data uh, I showed today are open access to everybody. If you simply search uh, Companicos Sentinel, then you get access to this Sentinel data sets. And for uh, planet imagery, I uh, explained, uh, um, I basically presented today. Of course, for large scale, then you need to uh, have access from the company, but the do also have educational license that you can get uh, basically small samples of the data. And for uh, other national missions, uh, satellite data, uh, there is always possible to get a scientific access if you just write a very short proposal to explain what you want to do with the data. So I guess uh, at this point, time point um, in EO, we're really in the era of uh, open data. <laughs> Fantastic. Shaojan, it's so great to listen to you. I think we could continue this for another hour or something like this, but unfortunately we're on a very tight schedule. But um, let me invite everybody to visit the booth of the DLR and the Munich Air setting. We're also looking forward to seeing Xiao Zhang at the next panel session that will start at 10 o'clock. And let me remind everyone, we will close this conference room at the moment. You have to log in again for our panel, Careers in Data Science, Aeronautics and Space, featuring the great Xiao Zhang Zhu and Professor Marek Baer, 
from RWTH Aachen. So looking forward to seeing you again in the five minutes. Um, and um, yeah, see you then. Thank you.